In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the graphs of what are called the reciprocal trigonometric functions. And uh, the first one we're going to do here is cosecant. Uh, cosecant and sine are reciprocals. Sine is called one of the basic trig functions, and cosecant is a reciprocal. And so cosecant, y, uh, cosecant x is 1 over sine x. Now what you see in the graph here is a couple of periods of the sine function. I'm going to use the sine function to graph the cosecant function. Now at this point, at pi, of course that's 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, the sine of all those angles is 0. And so the uh, value of the denominator here would be 0 then, and we'd be dividing 1 by 0, and of course you can't do that, that's undefined. And so the, that means that the cosecant function will have vertical asymptotes at uh, here on the y-axis where x is 0, at pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, etc. So there's vertical asymptotes at every multiple of pi. Now, we're going we're to graph actually the uh, cosecant function between this vertical asymptote and the one at pi, and we're going to use some values from sine. So for example, at this point right here, uh, the uh, angle is pi over 2 and the sine of pi over 2 is 1. And so if we put pi over 2 here, pi over 2 here, then the cosecant of pi over 2 would be 1 over the sine of pi over 2, and, and this is 1, reading that from the graph, so 1 divided by 1 would be 1. And so the, that's a point, pi over 2, 1, is a point that's on both the sine function and the cosecant function. Now, uh, notice that pi is divided into uh, 6 blocks here, so this would be pi over 6, uh, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4, and that would be 5 pi over 6, for example. And I'm going to plot a couple of points, and I'll explain where they come from. Uh, first of all, this one right here. So the x value is pi over 6. So what I'm actually evaluating here is the cosecant of pi over 6. And so it would be 1 divided by the sine of pi over 6. And if you look on your unit circle, or you can use your calculator, the sine of pi over 6 is a half. So 1 divided by a half is 2. So that's actually the point pi over 6, comma, 2. That's that point right there. For the uh, the one at 5 pi over 6, if we stick a 5 here, the sine of 5 pi over 6 is a half again, and so we get that point as well. 5 pi over 6 comma 2 is another point on the uh, cosecant function. Now, um, as you approach the vertical asymptote from the left, not exactly at that point, So what's happening is we're coming along the curve and getting close to that, but we're not quite there. The y value for sine becomes very small, and the same thing happens on this side. The y value for the sine gets really small. And so what you have for our cosecant function is you have 1 divided by a very small value. And the smaller that number is, the more times it goes into 1, so the larger the y value gets. And so as you get close here, what happens is the y value gets to be pretty big. And the same thing happens on this side. That point isn't necessarily meant to represent that it's at 7 or something like that, just that the y value is large. And so if we join these together, that's, what, that's the shape of the cosecant graph. And so the arrow means that the closer you get to the asymptote on this side, or the asymptote on this side, the smaller the y value gets for sine, so the bigger the cosecant function gets. So everywhere that there's a this shape for the sine graph, the cosecant function will have the same shape. Now, the very similar thing is true for these parts of the sine function, except the y values are negative, so everything's negative. So it still it's the same shape, except they're upside down. And there's another, uh, the up, upright ones. So down here, down here, same thing over here. So the cosecant graph is an, an infinite number of these kind of parabola shaped uh, objects uh, between all these vertical asymptotes. That's what the cosecant graph looks like.
On the next page, we'll take a look at the graph of the secant function. And uh, secant x and cos x are reciprocals. So secant x is 1 over cos x. Now, remember, cosine and sine really have the same shape. They're both called sinusoidal functions. And uh, they're really just horizontal translations of one another. So same shape of curve, but cosine isn't uh, like sine was 0 at 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, etc. The cosine graph is, has a value of 0 at pi over 2 and every pi multiple above that. 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, etc. And so all those uh, dotted lines are the vertical asymptotes for the secant graph because they're where the cosine function is 0. Hence, secant's undefined because, remember, you cannot divide by 0. Now, by the same reasoning as in the previous page, for this part of the graph, these humps, okay, or uh, maximum parts, I suppose you'd call them, the um, to get the secant graph, it's the same idea. Y value is 1 there, so 1 divided by 1 will be 1. Uh, the smaller that uh, the cosine function gets, the larger the secant function gets. And so the same argument as the previous page will have these same shape curves. Because cosine and sine are just horizontal translations of one another, it makes sense that secant and cosecant have the same relationship because they're reciprocal of these two very similar graphs. And so every place we have the, the part above the uh, x-axis, they look like this. And here's all the ones below. And of course, there would be one over here too. So that's what the graph of the secant function looks like. Now, for cotan, uh, cotan is, is the reciprocal of tan. And uh, everywhere then the tan function is zero, which would be here at pi, at 2 pi, all those places the tan function is 0, so the cotan would be undefined, 3 pi, 4 pi, etc. Now, I'm going to plot uh, a few ordered pairs from the tan function in between these two uh, vertical asymptotes to show you what the cotan function looks like there. And you might guess that uh, there's just an infinite number of these same shape curves, just like there is for the tan function. So, uh, first of all, uh, right here, which would actually be an angle of pi over 4, if I were to evaluate the cotan of pi over 4, it would be 1 over the tan of pi over 4. And you can use the unit circle or your scientific calculator. The tan of pi over 4 is exactly 1. So the cotan would have the same value, it would be 1 there. And the same is true over here, except, of course, the tan value is negative 1 there, so 1 divided by negative 1 would be negative 1. Now, at pi over 2 here, tan is actually undefined, because as angles get close to pi over 2, the tan function becomes infinitely large. And so if you have 1 divided by an extremely, and that's supposed to be a large value, 1 divided by a very large value, tends towards 0. So let me put my points back here. So the cotan actually at pi over 2 would have a value of 0. Now as you get close to the origin here the tan function gets quite small. And so for there you're actually dividing uh, 1 by a very small number. And of course that tends towards infinity. So the closer you get to the origin here, the smaller tan gets, the larger the cotan function gets. And the very similar idea is true over here to the uh, uh, left of this pi asymptote. But of course, at that point, tan is small, but it's close to zero. So we'd have uh, a negative small number here. And so it tends towards negative infinity. And so the graph is, uh, is, is way down there. And so if we join those points together, we get the shape of the cotan function. And so there's an infinite number of these cotan curves between all the vertical asymptotes. And that's what the cotan function looks like. And of course, there'd be one over here as well. So same shape as the tan function, except uh, it's, it's like they're reflected in the x-axis because of the reciprocal nature of them. Example 4 asks to explain the difference between the secant of root 3 over 2 and cos, the inverse cos of root 3 over 2. Well, to evaluate the secant of root 3 over 2, 
secant and cosine are reciprocal, so we would go 1 over the cos of root 3 over 2, and we could evaluate that, and of course that means the same as cos root 3 over 2 to the power of negative 1, which means the reciprocal of cos root 3 over 2. So if we evaluate that with our scientific calculator, uh, take the cos of root 3 over 2 and then evaluate to the power of negative 1, we get approximately 1.5435, etc. Now, what this means, and notice the power of negative 1 is here, this does not mean a power of negative 1. It means to take the inverse cos of root 3 over 2, which means that means to find the angle whose cosine value is root 3 over 2. That's what that means. And of course you could uh, look on the unit circle and find that uh, the angle is pi over 6, so the cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Uh, quite a different thing than this means over here. Okay, So this is just evaluating a trig ratio, while this means find the angle whose cosine is root 3 over 2. Very, very different things. Uh, last example, uh, number five here, a lighthouse with a rotating beacon is located 1,500 uh, meters, and that's the beacon, uh, east of a coastal cliff that runs north to south. This is the coastal cliff. And we're asked to determine a relationship between the uh, uh, distance to the cliff and the angle of rotation. In this right triangle, this would be for angle alpha, the adjacent side, and this would be the hypotenuse. Adjacent to hypotenuse is the cosine function. So the cosine of alpha is 1500 over d. And in order to uh, rearrange for d here, I would multiply both sides by d. So I multiply by d these d's divide out and then I would divide by cos alpha. So after these divide out d is just 1500 over the cos of alpha. So that's the relationship between the distance and the angle alpha. And in B we're asked to find an exact expression for the distance when the angle is 5 pi over 12. So we would fill in 5 pi over 12 in place of uh, alpha here. And we could write this in terms of secant before we get to B here. Uh, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, so we could also write that as the distance is 1500 secant alpha without getting into any uh, rational expressions here. So in B, we're going to evaluate this for an angle of 5 pi over 12, so 1500 secant 5 pi over 12. Whether you're using your scientific calculator or the unit circle, you'd need to uh, evaluate secant by changing into 1 over cosine. And so uh, now 5 pi over 12 is not on the unit circle, so the way we would evaluate that is find two angles that add to 5 pi over 12. And there's other ways to do it, but that's one way. So I'm using that cos A plus B or X plus Y identity. So the cos of uh, x plus y is cos x times cos y minus sine x sine y. And so I would evaluate each of these, and I can from the unit circle. So the cos of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. The cos of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. The sine of pi over 6 is a half, and the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And so multiplying these out, root 3 over 2 times, and they're both over 2, gives you root 6 over 4. And 1 times root 2 is root 2. 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And so now the way we would evaluate this is we would go then that the distance is the 1500 in a numerator times the reciprocal of the second expression. So we end up multiplying the 1500 by the 4 which is 6000. So we get 6000 over this root 6 minus root 2 denominator. And so that's the distance when the angle is 5 pi over 12. That's what this distance would be here from the light to the cliff. And that's the end of the lesson.